Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Rusty Nelson and welcome. Today we are doing questions and answers and I always love these things. Let's go ahead and get started. How's it going everybody? I am Rusty Nelson and welcome to my channel here. Uh, uh, kind of everything about the villages except expanding now. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff. I really appreciate it. Just take a second to smash that like button. Always helps out. But I I do really like these questions and answers things because uh, this is where I get to throw on every once in a while people that I ran into around the villages. So I'm going to do that uh, on a few of these. Sorry if I don't get to all of them. And I have to be honest with you, sometimes I'm out there and I end up losing them when I record them on my phone. But thank you so much for uh, jumping in. And in fact, let's go ahead and do one right now. Here's Steve. <laughs> All right, the music's real loud. I don't know that you're going to be able to hear me, but I'm here with Steve. With Steve. Yep. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> and, and you just told me you just bought a house. About two months ago. Bought a house two months ago. Two months ago. I'll be, I'll be your recommendation. He blamed, he blamed I'm, it on I'm me. I'm blaming it on you. He's blaming it on <laughs> me. I'm blaming it on you. You having fun so far? I am. I'm really enjoying it. You got family down here? Or are you? No, just me and my wife. We're down here in retirement mode and loving it. Place, huh? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Yes, it's nice meeting you. Nice meeting you also. And, and don't mess with this guy because he, he's got like the suit on. Stop it. <laughs> Have a good one. Yeah, you too, man. That was a lot of fun meeting Steve. Actually, what happened was is I was standing there, you know, in that aisle. You're not supposed to be st standing in right there. And going into the squares, for those of you that haven't been there, there's lanes and there's people out there to kind of help you move around and make sure things don't get clogged up. And Steve was standing there. He was working there and he had on the vest and stuff like this. And he went to go like this, which kind of made me feel like, hey, uh, you're not supposed to be standing right there because I was kind of oblivious to everything going on. And all of a sudden he goes, hey, he says, you're rusty. And I said, yeah. And he explained to me that he was watching the videos and he ended up buying a house down here watching the videos. So thank you so much, Steve, for watching them. And congratulations. Uh, he seemed like he was really happy down here, which is always cool. Now, um, let's go ahead and uh, let's just go, go to the the first question. So a lot of these questions are people that have asked stuff in the comments or made statements, and I'm just replying to them. Let's get to the first one. This first one comes from Bruce. Now, it's when I do these and it has to do with a video that I've shot, like a, questions about a pre previous video, I'll go ahead and put the link above or I'll put it down and or down below. Just so you know, I think when you're like watching it on TV and stuff like that, you won't see these links above. So you have to be watching it on your computer or your phone. So Bruce writes, why didn't you help her with the luggage? Now, this re this re refers to the video I did just a short time ago with Gloria when she came to visit and she got off the airplane and I was picking her up at the airport. And the funny part of it is I was stuck out in the like the third or fourth lane. And as she came out with her luggage, the cop was standing in front of me and he's like waving me through. And I kept, I was pointing towards Gloria, that she was going to get in the car. So I couldn't get out of the car because there were cars whizzing by me on the left. And the funny part about it is, is while I was doing this, I was thinking, boy, I'm going to catch crap for not helping her with her luggage. And sure enough, Bruce, you weren't the only one. You caught right onto it. And uh, as you can see, there's three uh, or seven thumbs up there like, hey, why didn't you help her out? Anyway, that's why but luckily, she uh, got her luggage in the car okay. She only had a small bag. Anyway, on to the next question. The next question comes from NF. Not sure who that is, but NF writes, Hi, Rusty. I was wondering why you have to place several cameras on your property. Is it because there are many home invasions or robberies in the villages? Thank you for your informative videos. Well, thank you, NF, and thank you for watching. Actually, I'll say right up front, no. And uh, that's the last reason I'll explain why I have them there in a second. But let me read you this from the uh, crime rate in the villages. According to the most recent FBI reports, the villages are among the safest places to live in Florida, with about 
2,116 crimes per 100,000 people. The crime rate in the villages is about 40% lower than the national average. The violent crime rate is about 41% lower than the average as well. Residents living in the villages are served and protected by, and we love them, active duty police officers in Lake County, Marion County, Sumter County and Lady Lake Police Department. So, uh, and we don't forget the uh, community watch program and the community, the folks that uh, actually live in the villages that drive around and keep an eye on our properties. So we we appreciate them all. Thank you very much for myself. Uh, I really have no crime fear at all in the villages. Um, uh, you, you know, there's very, very little crime now. So why do I have cameras? One reason is because I am not in my house all the time. I come and go a lot. And since this is my first year, uh, I like to be able to monitor things. Now, the camera that he's talking about, and I'll put the link up down and below, is a really cool dual camera video doorbell. And it will take a picture of not only the person ringing the doorbell or somebody approaching the door that you can talk to them, but it also takes a picture, an image, a uh, video of your uh, boxes and stuff that are left by, say, Amazon or whatever. And if somebody comes and actually picks it up and also tells you, hey, somebody took your package. So I thought it was a pretty cool item, and I did a video on that. And you may want to take a look at it if you're interested in something like that. And that's that's why NF, that's why I have my cameras. Now, I also, uh, when people come in there, I use Empty Nest, which is a program where they come in once a week and check my my home while I'm gone. Also, they come in and out if I need them, if somebody's dropping something off, or if I'm having a repair done, they also show up. So I can kind of monitor that. And also, since I live on the pond in the back, I like to watch the pond. And in front, uh, I can keep an eye on what's going on out there, especially when it's raining really hard, keeping track of the weather. So anyway, that's it. Well, let's move on to the next question <laughs> and hopefully an answer. Here we go. This next one has to do with saving some money. And this is about a video that I did uh, quite some time ago, actually, about um, tax exemptions for your property if you're a full-time resident in Florida. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing here, but the question, it was actually wasn't a question. It was a statement by Lori. Uh, I also did it right away, even though I will not get it until next year. Easy peasy, and the office made it so easy. They were very nice and helpful. This is the Department of Revenue. Now, I will flick up here really quick and grab this. And this is just a quick glimpse at it, but I highly suggest you go back and watch the video because there's more to it than this. Uh, this is a property tax exemption for a homestead, but there's other exemptions veterans and stuff like that can get. Um, go back and listen to the video and you'll know where to go and what to look for. Anyway, that is it. And uh, just be advised, this is not something you can do a month before. You need to look at this and do it way in advance for the next year. Anyway, be forewarned, let's save some money and go on to the next question. Okay, I guess it's about time to meet up with somebody else that I met. And this is kind of a fun one that I met this guy, Pete, in the grocery store. And I was standing there. I kind of set this up a little bit. I was standing there looking at this. I, it was early in the morning. I had just gotten to the grocery store at o dark 30 in the morning. And I'm looking at the, the refrigerator and I'm looking, well, you'll hear what I'm looking for. And this guy comes up behind me and taps me on the shoulder. Take it away, Pete. Hey, my name is Pete Scarito, big fan of Rusty. I'm outside of Philadelphia. I happen to bump into um, Rusty looking for Scrapple. Uh, yeah, that's what, we're, that's what <laughs> we're doing. I just got down here at like 3.30 in the morning. Uh, you know, yeah. All of a sudden he sees me studying the bacon. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering who this guy was uh, looking at bacon yeah, so yeah. intense. And 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 I can't find the scrapple right now. And I couldn't find the tail of the pork roll, but but we're gonna get but it. I, I found him though. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this channel; yeah. it's great. You get a lot, a lot of information. <laughs> okay, man. Hey, Good Rusty, to see you. Take care of yeah, have a great day. Hope you find the scrapple. <laughs> All right, that was fun. That was Pete. And there I am standing uh, early in the morning, staring at the bacon, probably a deer in headlights. 
And when, when Pete taps on me, so it was kind of funny because I almost forgot what I was looking for, but he had seen the video that I did, and I'll put that linked in there too, about Scrapple. We all have those favorite foods from where we came from to go down to the villages. And I did a video on uh, Scrapple and uh, Taylor's pork roll. And it was fun talking to Pete about being on the stoop and stuff like that. So he, he understands Philly. Now, staying with the food thing, let me read this one. And I, this has some explaining to do because I normally wouldn't let this one uh, be seen as one of the comments. Just so you folks know, if you're listening, I read every single comment. I do not let every single comment fly. Why? Because some of them are, are you know, some of them are just bad, foul mouth nonsense. And we don't need to waste our time. I'll waste my time reading it so you don't have to. But also, if it's critical, I don't mind constructive criticism where the owner of that criticism, in other words, who that is directed to, they can do something about it. And so I'll read this and explain to you why. And and it's not their fault, you know, and and, and I this is by going places, which I thank you for watching, but I'll, I'll explain why. Rusty, we hated our last visit to Wolfgang. Now, this has to do with a uh, video that I did about Wolfgang Puck the hotel, the spa, which uh, Gloria and I over Valentine's Day had an absolutely wonderful time there. The food was horrible and the waitress was clueless. We ordered a margarita pizza. I mean, really, how can you screw that up? They did. Our friends went on a separate occasion and they said it sucked for them as well. Now, I'm sure this person is, their intent is well meant. But when I say constructive, to leave it up there, I mean something constructive where, you know, the dough was this and we did this. We explained to the waitress, um, you know, this, this, is, this pizza is unacceptable. And they did nothing about it. To me, that's horrible. I always complain about stuff. I mean, I complain about it. I say, generally, you know, look, I ordered this medium rare and look at it. It's like a piece of toast, burnt toast. And if they don't take care of that or rectify the situation, as far as I'm concerned, you're fair game for anything, but I guarantee you it's going to be constructive criticism that you're not going to like. So this was basically the food was horrible. The waitress was horrible. Our friends went and it was horrible. Do you see what I mean? There's nothing that the restaurant can do about that. And trust me, they want, they look at these. They, I, I know they see them because they've written to me afterwards. So just so you know, once again, I read every single one of these and I monitor it. That's why I say, don't try to contact me in messages. Don't try to contact me on my photography site. Put the question here. If it deserves to go out, I'll put it out. If you just want to direct something at me, go ahead and say something to me. I'll see it and then delete it. So anyway, um, that that's about it. Watch the video. Uh, you can see we had a wonderful time there. I will say right away, I, I spent 30 years in California, 20 of them in LA. And if you didn't have a good restaurant there, you did not survive. It's as simple as that. So I know kind of good food, mediocre food, and bad food. The food in the villages, I would say, is mid-level. My favorite restaurant, and I'll give you an example. My favorite restaurant is Bluefin. Hi, Mike, the bartender, and Ryan. Um, they both work back there behind the bar, and one of the reasons why I go there is because of them. But uh, I, Gloria and I, that's where we went for our Valentine's Day, and it was horrible. I mean, it was absolutely the meal, they didn't have what we wanted. The people next to us left. Um, it, it just, the, the food was bad. It was cold. They were out of stuff. Um, my suggestion is, is don't go to restaurants on special days unless you can order food. I mean, so I talked to them afterwards and they said, well, the, the, you know, to no fault of their own, their truck didn't come in. They were in a total panic. They help to rectify the situation afterwards. So it's still one of my favorite restaurants owned by the same people that own Harvest. And I like both of them. I had duck the other day at Harvest. It was wonderful. 
So anyway, if you're going to write stuff, just keep all that in mind. Let's jump on to the next question. Just a short time ago, I did a video with Bob and Liz. And if you subscribe to this channel, you know who Bob and Liz are. And we actually, they were nice enough to bring me back in for a tour of their designer home. See, I got it right that time. Designer, not a premiere, designer home. And they live right across the pond from me. And there was a ton of questions. I'll keep trying to gather them and maybe we'll go back and answer some. But this is kind of two parts. The biggest question was one of the things that Bob installed right as we're going through the door. I'll put the link to this video up. And uh, right as we were going through the door, I stopped Bob and I said, hey, Bob, what's that? And on his front door, he had a pull screen. And maybe I can, I'll can i cut in a video of it really quick. I'm going to ask uh, Bob to stop right here and show off his screen that he just put in. So... So this is a slider screen, yep. right? And you yep. got this so you can keep the breeze coming through? Open the lanai doors, open the door, and you get a nice breeze right yeah. there. Yeah, and you put that in yourself? I did. Yeah, cool. Very easy. Guess what I'm getting? Because <laughs> <laughs> I got the same breeze they do. I'll help you if you need so. Tom, along with a ton of other people, wrote, love the pull-out screen. Can you ask Bob where he got it? So I figured to, to squash some of those questions, we'd go ahead and put it on here. And Liz was nice enough to jump on there and answer a lot of questions. So before you ask a question, go back to that video and look through a lot of the questions because she did answer some. Uh, he got it at a Home Depot, a uh, Luminaire single retractable screen door, comes in different colors and sizes. So that's about it. Obviously, everybody's is different, but the reason for it is, is both uh, their home and my home, since it faces on the other side of the pond, we get a pretty steady breeze going through there all day. So it's really nice to be able to open up your door. Some people have screens, you've seen them go all the way across the garage and people open up their garage. But this is really nice because it opens up the door and latches and then that can go breeze right out towards the pool. So that's it. Uh, maybe I'll have some more answers to those uh, questions about the pool and stuff. And speaking of prices, let's jump to the next question. There's been a couple of times where I've met up with people far away from the villages, not in the villages. One time, all the way up here in Philadelphia, somebody stopped me at Costco. Now, the other day I was up in Ocala and I went to a Hobby Lobby. I'd never been to a Hobby Lobby in my life. And I was talking to Gloria and she said, you ought to go. Maybe you can find a couple of things for the house. So I thought, oh, what the heck? I got nothing to do tonight and drove all the way up there. And when I walked through the door, I heard Bob and this is Bob. Okay, so I'm up here in Ocala at Hobby Lobby. And no, I didn't meet Santa Claus. <laughs> but it's pretty close. I met Bob. Bob. And my wife's gonna miss this because she's on the other side of the store. Yeah, she's, she should hang out with you. Yeah, so. she should stick and around. It, she only comes around when she needs a credit card. And, and you watch the channel? Oh yeah, I yeah. watch the channel and, on YouTube, Rusty Nelson. Yeah, you just you just moved here. Yeah, we moved here two weeks ago yeah. down at uh Hanek, or ha Hammock at Finney. Oh, okay, just good. Just bought a house down there and moved in. Good, cool. Well, welcome. Well, thank Congratulations. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the next one has to do with, and I, I don't want you guys to think I'm avoiding you, but I specifically don't put prices in here. And the reason being is it can do nothing more than mislead almost everybody. And for instance, uh, Pam, Pam wrote, base price of the home. Now, on a lot of these custom homes or, you know, designer homes, there's a base price you start out with. They change so much. In, in the time that they had started building their house to the time I had met them, I think the base price changed $35,000. So nothing ever stays the same. It's always fluid. And you can get any of this information by just calling the villages. I, 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 that's the best thing I can say is to call uh, the villages and talk to them. I'm telling you right now, if you go back and watch some of my early videos where I'm dealing with them, it is so 
low pressure and they're more than willing to help you out. Um, also, that goes for things uh, like um, Dave writes, uh, you know, great video. Thanks for that. Uh, just out of interest, what is the approximate cost of the pool? I, I'm telling you right now, David and, and other folks, things change so fast. And they're, they, that's why I just don't get into pricing, like with my golf cart or my house. It, it's just not worth it. If you want to look it up on the tax rolls, it's all public knowledge of what people paid for homes and everything else. You can look at one of the other videos. I show you how to do that. But it, it, it just, yeah, I'm telling you right down there, down there right now, the the building materials change, the construction design changes, everything changes. So it's best that you just do the phone call and do a little footwork and do it yourself. I, like I said, I'm not trying to blow you off. I'm just trying to save you time because I'm going to give you the information two hours from now. It, it could be wrong. On to the next question. And here we go. Another one. I think we started out with NF asked the question. It says, good morning, Rusty. I was wondering if the retention wall and fence was an option for your home or was it included? I know the properties with retention ponds uh, pay a premium. Well, first of all, NF, let me say my disclaimer that, uh, you know, I always, I always say I do not work for the villages and I am in no way connected to the villages. But I will answer this question. Uh, take a look at, let me bring this up. This is a picture of some homes that are really close to a retention pond. And if you look, the homes on the left aren't quite facing the retention pond. So they actually have a wall behind them. And this is a home that's called a bungalow. And the idea behind the bungalow is that it has a little bit more privacy or you have a pet, something along those lines. Now, when you open up to a retention pond, like these homes on the right do, then obviously you're going to want to take advantage of the view. And if it's on a sloped area, like the homes in the middle right here, you'll probably have some like little type of retention wall. It just depends on the house and the property. So you really don't have a choice on these. You actually, the, the home comes with the fence. It's part of it. And these are, they're not prefabbed homes, so to speak, but they're, you know, these homes are spec homes. They're built and you purchase them just the way they are. One thing I will say in addition, like I said, I am not an agent. If you have questions, make sure you call an agent. But generally, uh, if they do back up to a retention pond, not only do they have the fences along here, but also the uh, things like cabinets, countertops, uh, tile in the bathrooms and stuff, floors are generally upgraded to go along with that slight boost in, uh, sometimes not so slight, uh, boost in the property. And on to one more question here about hospitals, doctors, and that type of thing. And we'll talk maybe a little bit about Medicare and Social Security. <laughs> well, okay, down here at Bowling with Joe. Joe. Joe, you can say it louder. Joe. See, he's got such a friendly face. And he ended up buying a house down here. I did. But, uh, two months ago. Two months ago by, by watching the videos. Yeah. So, uh, they'll just yo me a commission. <laughs> <laughs> so does SITV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he found the singles group, too. Anyway. Have fun cool. rolling. All right. See ya. <laughs> yeah. That was Joe. I was actually at one of the single in the villages functions. And they've totally revamped that group. I, I did a, a video on them a long time ago, and I'll put that that link down below or I can put it up, up here. And they've, they've done a lot with that group, that's for sure. And where we were at was what's called Lunar Bowling, and they basically run rent out the whole bowling lane. So you have to sign up for that way in advance because it always – fills up, but that is a lot of fun. And I met Joe there and he had just purchased a house and he was getting out to meet other single people. But the next question and information is really serious. And if you had seen my pneumonia video from just a few days ago or a few weeks ago, I had caught pneumonia down in the villages and I didn't have a primary care doctor down there. I went through a couple rounds at the ER. I went to urgent care a few times. And let me tell you something. One of the first things you want to do down there is get yourself a primary care physician. Now, I am not a broker. I am not an agent. I am getting very well versed in Social Security and Medicare 
Medicare. I'm going to have some information on that. I'm having a broker come on to talk about that. But I will tell you right now, if you are approaching your 65th birthday, even if you're not, you can still sign up on the Social Security website. Go ahead and get an account on there. Get that out of the way. Figure out way ahead of time whether you're going to take Medicare, actual Medicare, or whether you're going to go with an Advantage type uh, program. And there is a lot of rules and regulations with that. We're going to try to solve a lot of that with um, uh, this broker when they come on. But I will tell you right now, when you're within 90 days of your 65th birthday, you better have all this worked out with Medicare and Social Security and how you're going to handle your medical insurance. Because right now, I'll tell you and I'll explain really quick, I signed up about 40 days ahead of time. I am still waiting to hear back from the Social Security Administration, and I'm still waiting to hear about Medicare uh, for myself. So anyway, learn the rules, get involved in that early. That's my big thing. Now, let's go to this question. L. Hall writes, get well soon. This is why I'm not moving there now. Doctors are most important when moving. I have health issues that need attention first. I'm healthy, don't get me wrong, but getting there was no fun. Don't assume you're always okay. I couldn't agree with you more. Underlying conditions will sneak up with you. The question is, is there a list of doctors to see when choosing them down there? Now, I'm going to say a few things, and I, I'm, I'm not going to get involved in this question right away because there's a lot of angles to this and I basically, I don't want to be responsible. So don't ever listen to anything I say, but there's a group named Shine down here that can help you out a lot with social security, Medicare type questions. Also, you can talk to the folks at um, the Villages Health, which is an advantage type program that is contained within the villages. There are positive and negatives to that. I'm not going to get into that right now. You can also talk to an independent broker. Um, I'm sure that the Villages Health, their healthcare system, has a list of primary care physicians and specialists. So there's a lot of ins and outs to this. I beg you, folks. Please, before you pick out couches and and gardening things and trees and palm trees, start getting your doctor stuff lined up. That's my biggest suggestion to you. I'm going to try to help you out when I get this broker on here. Um, she had some things she had to do, but she'll be back in a couple of weeks and we're going to pound through this. So if you actually have some questions, put them in the comments, remember? I will put them aside and I will keep them and try to address them. Do not write to me individually. I won't see them and I probably won't answer them. Put them in the comments. That's all I can say about that. So thank you everybody for watching this. I appreciate it so much. I hope these are kind of fun to watch and see some of the people that I meet. Please keep the questions coming because I, I love doing them. And if you have them, other people have them, and I will pick a lot of them out to put on here. Anyway, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. That always helps. You don't get put on any list if you subscribe. You just get notified here on YouTube that I've put up a video, so that helps out a lot. And as I always say, have a wonderful day, and I will either see you down in the villages who knows, maybe I'll see you at Costco too or, or uh, Hobby Lobby, I don't know. Or I'll see you back here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me. Subscribe! <laughs>